Hi everybody, Creative Katie Karen Virtual here. Welcome to my channel and an art journal tutorial. Today we're going to use those gel prints. So this page is a, an experiment. I was playing around with color sparks that are water soluble pigment powders and I have this print on here. I am just adding some black marks just to add some detailing to the background. Now color sparks are water soluble and I don't want to reactivate that later on. So I am going to cover this up with acrylic paint and basically I don't care if it smudges. I'm pretty much wanting that same corally color. So I'm mixing alizarin crimson and orange with a makeup sponge right on top. And the acrylic paint is gonna seal that color spark so it doesn't bleed through when I put wet medium on later. Now I want to add some detail to this background and I grabbed this stencil, it's called Circle Jumble and I've had it for a while and I haven't used it and I absolutely love the mark making that it does. Now, spoiler alert, in the end you don't see a lot of this, but I did learn that I love this stencil and I will be using it where I can see it because I love the patterning and the mark making that it gave here. As usual, I'm using a makeup sponge and applying white acrylic paint right through that stencil. I just want it all over patterning and marks and you get a great variety of marks all with one stencil which I love. Instead of pulling out three different stencils, I just have one and I get all these different marks. Loving some of these motifs. This is called Numbers Jumble. And I decide I want to add some black to this. And I love the contrast that it gives. I'm wiping back some, I didn't like it. I'm making sure it goes off the edge because it seemed to be floating there. And all in all, I've created a lovely background. Now I'm adding some of this patterning. It looks like chicken wire, but a very small version of it. This is from Butterfly Collage Stencil. Now I'm pulling out some gel prints and you see that I'm pulling out colors that are opposite of the background because I know that when you pick colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel, they will really pop. So I'm drawing a cone shape and cutting it out in the various shades of teals and blues. They all have different marks. Some have stencils on them. Some have mark making tools on them. And the shape of this and some of the ideas that I've used here, I did get from a video that I saw a while back from Be Creative. And you can check out her videos. And as you can see, my gel prints, I use up papers from the scrap pile. And I'm making these different sizes. Now I made myself a beard template. I'm drawing the shape of the hat across the top. And I'm just making that a little darker so you can see what I'm doing. And now I'm just going to draw that beard in. And so on some of the gnomes, I'm going to make the beard longer and some I'm going to make it shorter. Now, yes, you can do this freehand, but if you lack that confidence, like I do, there are ways that you can make yourself a template, play around with it, and then once you have it the way you like it, do that. And I'm just tracing that on and putting basically where the nose is. And that's just to get my idea of where everything go is going. 
I'm not trying to make all the, the beards the same. I'm not trying to make all the noses the same. I want some variation on these gnomes. And I wasn't sure that I was going to use all five of the gnomes. I just knew that I was going to stick with either three or five, depending. And, you know, I picked a variety of gel prints. And there's just so I can see where it is before I go on to the next step. And it, you can see what I'm doing. So now I'm putting a coat of white gesso. I want to white out the beard. And you don't have to worry too much about getting this perfectly smooth because it's a beard and I want it to look like a beard, textural, like hair. So I'm not overly concerned, but I am using an angle brush. I find, as I've said before, an angle brush is really easy to get into the nooks and the crannies. So I have a variety of angle brushes, different sizes. And I'm just putting one coat of this. I will be adding many, many layers to these beards. I really couldn't see where the beard was, and I remembered I could use my Stabilo All Pencil in white to mark it down, and so I can see more easily, and so can you. So I'm just rearranging them, seeing what I have, and you know, basically doing the same thing to all five. Now I put it on the background and I didn't like where the black ended up with the orientation. And I just thought that it was missing something. And I wanted to introduce the coral turqu or not coral, the aqua turquoise color to the background. So I grabbed one of my homemade swirl stamps and I have it in two sizes and I use both of them. And I'm just stamping with the coral, with the turquoise, with a mixture of them. I just want to get that color in the background. I also thought, you know, it kind of looked like snow. I could have grabbed another stencil and done that with it. Just wanted to make an interesting background. And I went a little crazy here, went <laughs> a little overboard with all of these sizes. Then I decided, you know, I'm going to grab, get some variation here, and I grabbed a smaller one, and I'm just putting that in. And so a lot of the stencil work that I did early on, you don't see up front, but it's there, and it has added interest to my background. It does have a purpose, even if that only purpose is that it led me to where I am now. And I'm much happier. You can see how the teals and the turquoise of the gnomes really goes well with that background. It just tied it all together. So now I'm taking white acrylic paint and giving this beard another coat. I want it to be white for the most part. And you can see the difference that makes. And I find when you're adding multiple layers, when you want to get a certain level of coverage, let it dry in between. Instead of putting wet onto wet, it gets kind of glumpy. And while I didn't care if it was perfectly smooth, it just becomes harder to work with if you don't let it dry in between. So I'm drawing the noses back in. Now, alternatively, I could have used my one inch circle punch and punched that with maybe some coral or uh, alizarin crimson, 
color and use that as a nose and it would overlap the, the stocking head. There was no right or wrong. But instead I decided I'm just gonna keep painting and I grabbed some flesh tone color, mixed a little brown in it, a little bit of orange. So each one could be a little bit different. And I'm putting that on with a very small angle brush. I will list those stencils that I used early on in the description box below in the Amazon link, and they are available also um, at TCW. And I put these gnomes in this orientation here, on, and I thought, oh, I really like that. Instead of putting them all in a row like I had before, and I thought, oh, well, what if I turn the page this way? And I started playing around with the orientation. Keeping in mind, I knew I wanted to put some kind of quote, and I really liked this orientation, kind of staggering them in layers. So, happy accident. It's not over till it's over. Now I'm using a liner brush that is quite long and I've got some gray paint, white paint, a little bit of black, and I'm just adding lines very haphazardly on here. I'm, sometimes I get more white, sometimes I get more gray. I just want this to look hairy, like a beard. And I'm going to do this again with every single gnome. You can see the difference that makes. And I find the longer liner brush, I it's a little freer and I get more flow in my stroke than if I had just used the regular liner brush. But use what you have and you can make it work. There I'm pulling out the hairs a little bit onto the clothing and that just adds so much. Like here, it looks very unnatural. I had so much fun creating this gnome page. It will not be the last time. And in fact, I, I definitely will be making this into a canvas as well. Like I said, my art journal pages they're experiments, they're trials. And if I get an idea that I really like the look of, that I may wanna hang on a wall or I may wanna to gift to someone, then I've worked out some of the bugs. Now I'm using the floating acrylic technique and I'm adding some shading to the beard, to the body of the gnome, on the hat. And this is adding a lot of detail, a lot of interest. You want those shadows and lights and even that little bit of extra dark on the beard just adds. If I put a layer down, if I want more, I let it dry and I come back. I will put a link to the floating acrylic technique. And this is a good project to do it on because it's fairly simple. The lines are pretty easy to manipulate. So you can practice your floating acrylic technique. But you can just see that little bit of black there under the beard just really makes it pop. So I rearranged the gnomes in that way and I typed out a, a sentiment, go big or go gnome, which I love, and I'm staggering them, I'm putting them one on top of the other. And now I'm gluing down the gnomes with my gel medium. And this is also from the Crafters Workshop. So once I have the arrangement, I go down to what goes first and start layering it up.
I put the gel medium underneath and on top. Making sure that that's dry. Now I'm coming back and I want to do a little bit more shading. And I thought, oh, I'm going to do this fast and easy and I'm going to grab my charcoal pencil. The problem with this was it was smudging a little more and it was getting too smudged and too, I was getting that black on the beard and I wanted to keep the beard white. So I put away the charcoal pencil and I continue doing the float acrylic technique. That's permanent when dry and it's not smudging on the white. And this is making this stand out from the background, stand up shadows between the gnomes. And I'm shading, edging around the page. and a little shading around the words as well to make them stand out. This shading part, it takes a considerable amount of time, but these finishing details are what really makes your project. Now I'm liking this at this stage and I'm thinking I'm done, but I'm not. I want to give, I'm putting a little shading. I grab the alizarin crimson, just give them, give them rosy noses. And that color is what's in the background. So it's tying all our elements together. Now I grab my liner brush and I'm going to add another layer of hair. And this is going to overlap. Do you see how one gnome is in front of the other? Well, the hair would be brushed in, or the from the beard would be in front of him. And so I'm just extending those and adding just one more layer of hair, making them look 3D-ish. I think this added so much to the finished Prod project. It was very zen doing the line work. And remember, even though I use the template for the beard, the same for all of them, when I'm doing all this work, liner brush work, I'm changing the beard so each of the gnomes' beards looks different. And of course, right now I'm using pure white, no gray in, in it at all. And that's just adding to that layered fuzzy look. I'm going over this. And you can make a judgment call if it's going to be in front or behind. I overlap the gel prints.
and just adding a few more. It's very addictive. It's hard to know when to stop. And there is my finished page. I absolutely love it. I hope you do too. Thanks so much for watching. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. Check out the description box for any links. Now go get creative.